This video is part of a playlist where we build this, a Spotify web controller. We can play, pause a Spotify player, we can go to the next and previous track, and all of this built as a React.js Chrome extension. If you have no idea what this is, look in the description for details. All right, so let's start off by registering our Chrome extension with the, uh, the Spotify developer console. So just navigate over to developers.spotify.com slash dashboard, go to applications, and this is just the previous one I did. So let's just create a, a new one. So create an app. Let's call this app, I don't know, uh, React Chrome Extension Contr Spotify Controller App Description, that. So I understand, I understand, we'll do a create. And client ID, yeah, we'll save it right now. So copy this client ID. We'll go to the back end, and we're gonna save that in the background. So I just have a function that creates a random string. You'll see why we need that in a second. I just have the listener. And this is just a uh, a boilerplate Chrome extension. Uh, I'm assuming you know how, to, how this works if you're watching this video. If you don't, I'll link in the description to a video I did explaining how Chrome extensions work. If you're really new and you don't know any JavaScript, I have a course coming out that explains all of it in uh, much more detail. JavaScript, web development, and Chrome extensions. Anyway, so let's um, do this. Const client ID is equal to, and we'll do an encode URI component, and we'll just save that client ID. Now we just need to whitelist this Chrome extension. So edit settings. We're gonna go over to Chrome colon slash slash extensions. We're gonna copy the ID of the extension, so control C. Let's go back over here. And for the redirect URI, it's gonna be HTTPS colon slash slash, the ID of your extension, and then chromium, chromium app.org. There we go, slash add. There we go. So Spotify now knows that this extension has the ability to control the person's Spotify account. So go down here, we're gonna click save. All right, so now let me walk you through, what should I do? Let me walk you through the authorization flow we're gonna be using. So how about this, let me go up here first. So there's, I think, four different types or different authorization flows. One, two, three, four, yeah. So there's the authorization code flow, the code flow with the proof key. There's implicit grant and client credentials flow. We're gonna use this one right here. Authorization code flow with proof key for code exchange. This allows us to use an access token that we can then use to modify the user's Spotify web player. We can play, pause, next track, we can add playlists, all that stuff. And the great thing about this uh, code flow is it allows you to use a refresh token. And so when you get an access token, which we'll get to in a second, it's good for one hour and then it expires. This flow right here allows us to then refresh that token and then use it for another hour. So we get a total of two hours. You can't refresh more than once. So you get a total of two hours where you can control the user's Spotify player. So let's click this and let's start. So there's, I think, three steps, three steps? Yeah, three steps to this uh, flow. The first step is we ping this endpoint right here. Where is it, where is it, where is it? This guy right here. So we ping this endpoint, we get an authorization code. We trade in that code to this endpoint right here, and we get an access token. The access token lets us do stuff to the user's Spotify account. Now once this access token expires, we trade in a refresh token, to this API right here, and we get a new access token that's good for another hour. So again, two hours max, you can't refresh a token past one. So we're gonna create three functions. One that creates this URL right here, another that creates this URL, well they didn't do it, but this uh, this access token URL right here, and another function that creates the URL for the uh, the refresh token. So let's go into the back end and just write the basic skeleton for those guys. So let's say this, let's go function, get authorization, code, end point. And all these functions are gonna return promises because there's some async or asynchronous coding going on. So get authorization code, we'll name this one get access code, or access token, excuse me. Access token, and finally this one's gonna be get Let's go refresh token end point. And it's going to all of these guys. Yeah, async, so we'll do return new promise. 
So now it is. Return new promise. We'll need a resolve object. A reject object. Arrow function. There we go. Copy. We'll do paste. And we'll do a paste as well. Okay, so let's start with the uh, authorization code. So the steps for this are we need to create a code verifier. So code verifier is just a random string between 43 and 128 characters in length. That's why I have this rand function. So let's do that here. And then we'll have to get all these guys, these uh, query parameters. But let's get that out of the way first. And we're going to need the code verifier later on in the in this flow. So we need to save it. So I'm going to do this code verifier. Verifier, yeah, is equal to, and then we go to that hasher encoder library. Base 64. All right, we're going to use that in a second. So rand string, and we're going to repeat that five times. That should be between 48 and 128 characters. So let me create that variable up here. Let code verifier equal blank. We're also going to need something called state, which we do on the fly. State's just for added security purposes. So when we send the request to Spotify, we send a certain state. When they send a response, they send the exact same state back. And so we see if the state matches. If it matches, no one intercepted the, uh, the request response. So state's equal to that. And we're going to need to save the access token as well. So let's do an access token is equal to this. And we need to save a refresh token. The refresh token is not used to uh, get information from the user's account. You have to trade the refresh token in for another access token. There we go. So we have the code verifier set up. And what do we need to do with it? Code challenge. So the code challenge is encrypted in a hash of SHA256, and then it's encoded in a base64 URL. So we're going to go here, and we don't need to save this guy, so we can just do this. Const code challenge is equal to, so first things first, we encode, well, we encrypt first, so SHA256. And I just got this off of a website, or two websites. If I remember, I'll link them down in the description, but this will definitely be in the uh, in the write-up for this, this video. So SHA, so we're going to encrypt the code verifier, and then we need to encode that verifier, base64, which is base64, you really just copy it. Copy, we close this, paste that here. All right, so we have that important part of this step done. Created code verifier, and then we encoded and encrypted, or encrypted and then encoded that to create the code challenge. Now let's get all these guys out of the way. So we have client ID, response type, we need to set to code. So let's do a const response underscore type, set that to code. Next up, we need a redirect URI. Now that redirect URI is the exact same thing we had, we whitelisted in the URI or URL URI. We whitelisted in the, uh, here, in the console. But instead of hard coding it, like copying and pasting it, we're just going to do it programmatically. So we're just going to do a chrome.identity.get redirect. And they call it URL, not URI. So there we go. Go back here. We need a code challenge method s two five six const code challenge method is equal to encode URI component, and that is s h capital s h no just s two five six capital s two five six. All right. Next up, we have the code challenge that we uh, we created, so we don't need to do that. We have that down here. We need the state that gets created on the fly. And we have the scope. So the scope is when we make the request to Spotify, the scope tells Spotify what we want to be able to do on behalf of the user. If we don't do anything or put anything for scope, we can't control their web player. So we need to do this. We want to get the current track they're playing. So the scope is user read playback state. So copy this. Let's do this. Const scope is equal to encode URI component. We'll do this, and then we want to be able to play, pause, and next, previous. So play, pause, user modify, playback state. So copy this and paste that here. There we go. And what else do we need? Scope. One thing not shown here that I think it uses is show dialog. 
So that all it says is whenever they click the sign in button and we launch the flow, uh, pop up a screen that lets the user enter their email and password, even though they entered it once before. So it's just to always show the dialog when they click the sign in button. So we'll do show dialog encode URI component. We're gonna just set that to true. So we should have seven constants and one or two variables. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We are missing one. We're missing state six, seven. No, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So let's do this. Let's go down to, ba, 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 ba. so we need to generate a random state. So let me copy and paste some code here. Again, all it state is is a random string of numbers that goes out with your request. The exact same state comes in with the response. If the two match, no one intercepted the request or response. And this uh, this function right here is asynchronous. So we need to await it before we send the actual string back. So we're just going to do an await here. And so this is going to be an async function, async like that. All right, so we have all of the query parameters. Blah, 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 state code verify we're saving. Let's start creating the endpoint. Just going to do a const or a let do const. Const, let's do OAuth. Say OAuth. Uh, I don't know, end point is equal to, and we'll do this guy right here. So we need to ping which URI, this guy right here. So we're going to copy this, and we're just going to append all of these these, uh, these query parameters in a query string. So question mark, and then we're just going to go one by one. I'll fast forward through this part. So we're just going to say something like client ID is equal to client ID. All right, so I've constructed the uh, the URI. Let's do this. Send it back in a resolve. So we're gonna send it back in a resolve and an object. So we're gonna do a resolve of, and we'll just do a message of success, and then we'll pass the URI that we constructed. Why is that a colon comma? And we'll just call it the auth endpoint. We'll say oauth auth endpoint, whatever. We'll say auth endpoint endpoint, and that's set to the oauth endpoint. Resolve. There we go. Looks good. All right, let's test this out to see if it even works. So down here, if the request.from comes from the pop-up and the message is login, we're going to sign the user in with Spotify. And so we're going to call that function we just created so we can get the proper endpoint. So that was get authorization code. And it's a promise, so we're going to do a dot then. And if it's successful, it's going to be in a response like that. If it's not successful, we'll do a dot .catch like this, error. And we're just going to send a response. This has to do with the Chrome extension. When we get a, a, re a request from a someone sending us a message, we have to send them a response with send response. So if anything happened of an error, we're just going to send a message of fail back. So message of fail. All right, so we have the the endpoint constructed in the res. We're going to call an API called Chrome dot, what is it, identity dot launch web auth flow. An object, two things, the URL, so it's going to be the res dot, what do I call it, auth endpoint. Auth, uh, what are we doing, what are we doing, what are we doing? Auth endpoint and interactive, interactive, set to true. There we go. All right, so let's scroll down a bit. And so if we get a successful response, we'll get the function, we'll get a redirect URL. URL, it's a function, so we'll do this. Let's do this. So we need to check. So if there's an error in this API, Chrome's gonna throw an error. So we're just gonna do something like this. We're gonna do a chrome.runtime.last error, or if there's an error in the in this flow, so they maybe they signed in with the wrong credentials, we'll get a should be an error. Let me see. Control. I don't do a control F. Yeah, whatever. I'll do control F error. There we go. So there's going to be an error with an access denied. So we're just going to check the string for access denied. So let's go here. We're just going to say redirect URL dot includes access underscore underscore denied, right? Yeah. Access denied. So if there's an error or an access denied, we're just going to send a response back of message fail. Now, if there's not, we know that we have a successful login from the user. 
So in that successful login, in the URI, you're at redux the URI, let's show it here. This should give us a state back. There we go, state and the code. That's the access code, that's the state. So let's rip those two out of the redirect URL. So let's do this, let's do const code is equal to redirect URL dot substring we'll do redirect URL dot index of and we want the code plus one two three four it's gonna be code equals the query string so one two three four five code plus five we're gonna sign in and see if all this is working because I'm typing way too much code about testing Copy paste, let's rip the state out, lowercase state. And we're looking for state equals. So state, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, R6. And let's do this, console.log code. What is it, RE, there you go. Paste, console.log state. All right, let's see if this even works. So let's go over here, let's do extensions, refresh the extension, no errors, it's good. Let's sign in, and it's in the background console, so let me open that console up. Console, let's sign in. Give me the uh, the window, there we go. Let's go in, object is a at protonmail.com, password, remember me, now login. Authorize, agree, no errors, so we get in the background. All right, so there we go. That's the authorization code we're going to trade in for the access token. And that's the state we created. So we sent them meet seven, whatever. So we'll just compare the state with the state we gave. If it's true, no one intercepted it. So we can move on in the flow. So let's go back here. We're just going to say if state that we got is equal to the state that we created with the request, then we move in else again, send response. It's gonna be a lot of send responses with uh, with fails. It's gonna get not cluttered, but it's gonna get it. It's gonna be a large tree. So message fail like that. All right. So we have the authorization code. Let's trade that guy in for the access token. So let's go up here. And the access token, we're gonna use a fetch, and a fetch is a promise. So we don't need this guy here. So let's do a return of a fetch. So let's start constructing this fetch call, which is this guy right here, API slash token. Copy, paste, and it is a post request. So object method is post. We need some headers. There we go. And the headers are going to be, I think it's content type. Content dash type. Let me copy and paste it. It's a, bit, a pretty long string. So I'll paste here. So all we're doing is we're sending some form data with the post content type application ww form url and code we're sending the client id the grant type is authorization code we're sending the code that we got back from the the first uh first endpoint call so we're gonna have to pass that into this function here let's do that here c-o-d-e code the redirect uri and the code verifier that we constructed in that first uh the first uh promise call so we'll do a dot then for our fetch, we'll do res, and it says what? If we're successful, we get a 200 response. So if res.status is equal to 200, we are going to return the parse to JSON. Else, we're just going to throw an error. So throw new error, and we'll say unauthorized, unauthorized, there we go. And then we'll do not then, or another then. This is the resolved JSON. Let's console log it so we can see what's in it. And we won't do catches here. We do catches at the uh, in another when we call the uh, call the this function here. All right, that looks good. Let's use this function and see if it works. So state's equal to state. We're going to trade in the authorization code for the access token. So get access token endpoint. Give it the code. And we have that console log, so we'll see what's in it. Let's go back here. Let's go to our extension, refresh, give me the background page, good. We'll click the sign in button. We'll authorize and we'll see what we get. There we go. So that's the access token we have. We can use that to 
influence the user's Spotify account. It expires in 3,600 seconds, I think it is. Whatever, 60 minutes. That's the refresh token we're going to need, so we're going to have to keep that. So we'll keep the access token, we'll keep the refresh token, and that's just the scope that we we uh, we requested that the access token give us access to. So access token, refresh token, expires in. So let's go back here. We'll go here, we'll do a dot then, dot then, and we'll just do a res like this, and if there's any sort of fail, we'll do dot catch. I can just do this. Let me copy this, copy this, paste that here. All right, so let me do this instead. Delete this. I'm just going to return an object. So we're just going to turn all of the those properties and a message of success. CSS. So we'll check for that here, right here. So if res message is equal to two more success and we'll do some stuff else we send a response of fail not that one make this one there there we go all right so if we have a success we're going to save the access token so that was equal to do i still have that up background page object so access token refresh token and expires in it's going to be equal to res.access token we'll do a what we're gonna do refresh token is equal to res dot refresh token and we're gonna sign the user in so do I have a variable for that I do user signed in user signed in is equal to true now we're gonna set some some timeouts so we're gonna do one timeout first so set timeout like that and we're gonna trigger a get refresh token endpoint that's gonna have a dot then with a res and if not, we'll uh, send a, actually we won't need that because that'll be long gone. So we'll set this, the timeout for the expires. So it's 3,600. Let me just see what the timeout. All right, so we'll go back here and we'll just use the res.expires in, right? Expires underscore in, yeah. Expires underscore in times 1,000. So after the first access token is expired, we're just going to ping the refresh token and we're going to refresh the token. So let's write that uh, that guy here as well. And it is not a, well, it's a fetch, so it's already a promise. Return fetch. And what's the URI endpoint? Right here. Requesting a refresh token. API token, copy this. Paste, and what are we expecting in terms of method? The body of this post request. So method is equal to post. And again, URL encoded, application form, URL encoded, copy that. Why am I doing that when I can just do this? Copy C, copy V. And in the body, we're going to just have a string. All right, so we have the body, the client ID. The grant type now is refresh token, and the refresh token is the universal refresh token. So what are we expecting back? Not then. Res, is it the same thing? If it is, I'll just copy and paste. Sample response, client ID. And sample response is a, a JSON, so I think that's 200. We'll go back here and we'll just copy and paste this. Copy this, paste this, if that, perfect. Dot then we have the JSON and we print this out just to see. Actually, we don't need printouts right here. We get the new access token, token type expires in. So it's basically the same thing. You can refresh more than once? No, only once. So why would it give us a new refresh token? Whatever. So we have the new access token and the expires in. So we'll do that same kind of logic loop. So we're just going to do a return of, again, why am I writing when I can just copy and paste like this? Format, good, let's go down here, right here. Yeah, tree looks very branchy. We'll do an if res.message, 
AGE is equal to success. And we'll finally set another timeout. And this is the final one. So we're going to do a res dot expires in expires in times 1000 and no more refreshes. So we're just going to clear all of the tokens. We'll write this function now, clear tokens like this. So let's scroll up and write this function. All this function is going to do, it's going to dump the access token, the refresh token, and it's going to sign the user out. So let's go up here. What do I want to write it? It's right here. Function clear tokens. We're just going to dump. So access token is equal to empty string. Refresh token is equal to empty string as well. And the user signed in status is equal to false. And since I created this function, let's go down here. The click If they click the uh, logout, we're just going to call that same thing. So clear tokens. And if they make a request on this tree, we have to send back a response to the original sender. So we'll just do a success message. S-U-C-C-E-S-S. S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S. All right. Just go over this logic one more time. So if they click the login from the pop-out, we get the authorization code endpoint. We launch our web auth flow, interactive true. We check for any errors. If there's no errors, we take the code and the state. If the state matches, there's no intercepts. We get the access token by trading in the authorization code. If that's a success, we save the access token, save the refresh token, sign the user in. We wait 60 minutes, then call the refresh token endpoint. And then we wait another 60. Did I do that here? If then res, and this one should be a catch. That's what I forgot. Yank this. That's why it looks kind of weird. There we go. So refresh token. If it's a success, we set another timeout. The final timeout. That's 1,060 minutes. Let me just clear the tokens. Let's see if anything broke. Let's do this. Let's go to where am I? Extensions. Refresh. Good background page. Sign in. Let's go agree. Any errors? No errors. Looks good. The true test is to see if it can control my Spotify player. So let's do that. Let's create an object that's going to allow me to play pause, uh, next, previous, and get the, the current track being played. We'll put that object here. Might as well. So let's do a const. We'll do call it the player equals object and starter play. We'll do play. It's going to be equal to a function call. There we go. Let me just copy and paste this. Yank, play, pause. We'll do next, we'll do previous, and we'll do current. Let me scroll up a bit. So play, we'll do pause here. We'll do previous, or next, we'll do next. Next, we'll do previous, we'll do prev. And of course, the current track the user's playing. So let's do the, uh, the current first. Let's go here. So let's navigate over to the API reference. There we go. So we're going to be pinging which uh, authorization, this endpoint right here. Copy this. We'll do a back here. We'll do a return of a fetch call. That's the endpoint and it's a get, right? It is a get, so that's the default. We don't need to do that explicitly. We just need headers and we need to send that token, the access token in the authorization header, authorization. And we'll do this, we'll do bearer space and then access token like that. That should be it, right? B-E, right? B-E-A-R, B-E-A-R. Am I spelling it right? We'll see. Bearer, and where am I? Current user profile, player here. Just need to know what the response code is available devices there we go response code 200 for okay and 204 if no content but still okay so if they're not playing anything it's going to be empty 204 all right so we're looking for 200 or 204 so let me go back here dot then res and it's going to be a json right so we're just going to do a if res dot status is equal to 200 or res.status 
is equal to what is it, 204. And we return the parse to JSON. So res.json. Else, we'll throw an error. Throw new error. And whatever, unauthorized. You can be more creative with what your errors are. And authorized. We'll do a dot then. Res. And we'll do a console.log. Console.log of that res. There we go. Let's see if this works. So current, we want to test this. We want to call that function somewhere. Let's call it here. So after we get the stuff, we'll set the timeout. We'll just call it right here. Player.current. Like that. All right. Save. Go back. Let's refresh the extension. Give me the background page. Let's do a sign in. All right. Agree. There we go. Timestamp, currently playing, items, album. What am I playing? Oh, I never paused it. All right, so Brass in Pocket 2006 Remaster, that should be it. So items, artists, zero, and it gives me the name. So that's by the Pretenders? Yes, yeah, so that's the name of the artist. And then item, I need the name of the song. Item name gives me the uh, the name of the uh, the track. Let's see if that's actually proper. Let me just click on Hungry Heart Bruce Springsteen. Let's uh, run that again. Refresh. Give me the background page. Let's sign in. Let's do an agree. We got the items. We go to artist first of the array. Name is Bruce Springsteen. Item name Hungry Heart. All right, I don't think I can remember that. So let me write that. How should I write it? How should I write it? Let me do a notepad. All right, so I want to construct something like this. Artist dash song. So we're going to send back res.item artists. Artists. Yeah. And it is the first in the array. Dot name dash. And then it's going to be res.item dot name for the name of the track. We copy this, close this, don't save, close this, close this, refresh this, let's go back here, let's go back up here, and we're just going to return a string, return, we'll do that, and that's going to be, of course, string, this interpolation, string templating, let's see if that works, so all we're going to do is this, go back down here, Take away this. Console logs are taken away. Good. Player current. Dot then. We do a res. Console log the res. Status. All right. So let's go back here. Refresh. Give me the background page. Sign in. And should be hungry heart. Bruce Springsteen. Agree. There we go. Bruce Springsteen, Hungry Heart. So the current works. Let's do the other four guys. Refresh that. Let's go back here. Let's do the play. What is the play one? Play would be this endpoint right here. It's going to be a put. So copy this. Let's do a return fetch endpoint. And we'll do an object. We'll do a method of put. Uh, put. And the authorization header. So let me just copy that from here. And I don't like this. Let's do consistency. Method is going to be explicit get. There we go. We copy this. Put that up here. And what are we looking for here? We're looking for a response of 204, no content. And then issues the command. 4443 is just forbidden stuff. All right. Sorry, so 200? No, 204. For no content. So dot then res if the res dot status is equal to 204, we're good to go. We'll just do a what should we return? Return nothing, return success. We're playing. I don't know. We'll just do return this for now. Return that for now. Else we'll just throw a new error. And we'll just say unauthorized. 
Actually, just to stay consistent, let's do this. Throw new error, fail. Throw new error, CIW fail. If true, success. All right, let's see if this guy works. So we'll do this and we'll call it down here. So player dot play. There you go. So let me pause the player first. Jump original mix, pause. And just to see if it works, let's do a split screen. So refresh. Let's do, what should I do? Let's do this. You go on the right. You stay, uh, you go on the left here. There we go. All right, refresh, sign in. It should start playing the uh, the song. Authorize, agree. There we go, it started playing the song. Good, let's do the pause route and the next and the, uh, the previous. Let me put that guy back there. There we go. And what is the pause? It's the same pause, same thing. Pause, put, 204, and authorization. So we can copy and paste that code. Let's copy all of this. Control C, Control V. We want a pause instead of a play. The method is still put, headers, good. That's good, let's try it out. Let's do a pause, CW pause. Let's go back. Let's start playing this. Let's do a refresh. You're over there. You're over there. You're playing. Refresh. Sign in. Authorize. And should pause. There we go. All right. Just the next and the previous, and we're done for this video. So let's do this. Back. Back. Next and previous, what do we need here? Skip users playback next. It's gonna be a post. And what do we need with the post? Nothing. The ID, that's optional. So you can have a device ID if they're playing on more than one device. Just 204, no content. All right, so let's just copy and paste the exact same code. So let me copy all this. We'll do a paste. And of course that was a post. Post and the URL was that. Player next. Delete this. Control V. Next post, and we're looking for 204 success fail. Does it give me back the does it give me back the get the affirmation come back? Yeah. Alright, let's try this. Let me do that before we even do that. Control V. And that should just be previous, right? Yeah. So let's test those two routes down here. We'll do the uh, the next first. So next, or excuse me, player.next, player.next, save. Let's go back here, let's play a song. I don't know, let's go Rhythm of the Night, debarge. So it's playing. When I sign in, we should go to the, uh, the next track. Let me do this. You're on the left side there, please, thank you. We should go to the dancing and the whatever, Bruce Springsteen. So let's refresh, let's log in, sign in, authorize. Let's do this. No, not that. Let's do this. Agree. Go next. There we go, dancing in the whatever. Let's go to the previous track. C-I-W, prev, save. Let's go back here. Good. Let's just do Billy Ocean. And so we should go back to the uh, the Kim Wilde. Refresh. Sign in. Authorize. And back to Kim Wilde. Okay, so the player works. The back-end logic works. Let me do this. All that's left to do is to merge this back-end logic with the, the foreground, the actual app. So just make calls from the foreground to the uh, the background tree. We're gonna have a lot more of these routes in the uh, the next phase. So don't forget to give a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I will see you guys in that next phase.